Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. <sighs> Man, what a relief. I just finished my first midterm at my astronomy online class. It was only 29 questions, but sadly I only missed two. So I earned my points of 41 out of 46, so I did pretty well. I also had done some assignments and quizzes and earned a good grade so far, so I'm getting better. But I'm definitely going to get even much better by the time I get to the next midterm and all these other assignments and quizzes that I have to keep up with and continue studying some more. So that way I'll, I'll do even better. Well anyway, so I took a long break. I was watching some movies. In fact, um, a couple weeks ago I went to Dollar Tree and I bought five DVD titles along with two Blu-rays. There was actually like a bunch of titles that they were selling um, at Dollar Tree and pretty rare titles that they were selling. You know, they had like several copies of all these Blu-rays and DVDs that's laying around and I had to pick up uh, some so that way, you know, that way I get to own them because I figured they'd be good <laughs> right away. So one of the Blu-rays I just picked up and I just watched it last Friday it was the movie that was based on a short story by James Ferber back in 1939 which had later turned into a film adaptation in 1947 with Danny Kane which I really enjoy and it just had a remake from 2013 it came out on Christmas Day and this time it's Ben Stiller that adapted the story since not only is he the star, but he's also the producer and director. And that is the movie, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Yep, a story about Walter Mitty, who's a daydreamer, who basically escapes um, from his anonymous life, you know, working at Life Magazine, you know, doing all his other activities that he wanted to do. I mean, he works as a negative assist manager. And he just wants up escaping to um, enjoy his entire life by experiencing the heroism, romance, and lifelong dream adventures. So that's what he does. Yeah. And this is the Blu-ray combo pack that I picked up at Dollar Tree. Surprisingly, this was a different combo pack because, believe it or not, this was a former Walmart exclusive. I never thought I would get this for a dollar, but I did. And I mean, that explains why they had a different cover art which shows Walter Mitty on top of the shark with his silver briefcase, while the other regular Blu-ray combo pack had the original cover arts where, which is in the movie posters, where you see Walter Mitty uh, walking or running on air, in midair, <laughs> with a silver briefcase. And he was all the way on top of where, on the city skyline of, of New York City. So that was really cool. And that also is on the, the disc cover as well, which I'm going to show you. The difference between those two releases is that the regular one is just uh, a simple standard release, which just has the Blu-ray and DVD plus a digital HG copy, the yeah, ultraviolet. Um, while this one has the same thing but it includes a CD soundtrack and I'm going to show you exactly what's on there see here's proof here's the CD soundtrack right here has all the wonderful music that's included here's the, the blu-ray that's the same cover art that you see in movie posters and the DVD. Yeah. Has a HD digital copy and also has a, another flyer which is um, Shutterfly. I'm just... Uh, oh God, it's, it's kind of hard to do this. Uh, excuse me for a moment. Um, I'm just going to block the the bars. 
but this is what it looks like. I'm not going to use it though, and I think it's already been expired. Yeah, August 31st, uh, 2013. Um, but I did use the, the digital copy, so it's good. Um, anyway, uh, just hurry up here. Well, um, I really did enjoy this movie, surprisingly. I, I thought this is one of the um, the better remakes that I've seen so far in this generation. And the first time I saw this movie, unfortunately I only saw half of it. It's when I was interning at Inclusion Films and one of the students was playing this movie on Blu-ray. So I couldn't uh, watch the rest you know, during lunchtime. However, I had a chance to watch the rest of it uh, when I found it online. Yeah, it was available online, and I later uh, watched it on HBO, so I had a chance. And I was very impressed by it. It was really well, well done. I mean, it had beautiful cinematography. I mean, you got to look at all these beautiful landscapes that they use when he took a journey all the way into um, Greenland. I mean, it, it never looked so beautiful and colorful than ever before. Yeah, there were a lot of titles on the screen that they use, and a lot of great uh, imagery that they had, you know, where they use all the Kodak um, negative imagery that they use, and all of that. And the way uh, Life Magazine looks, too. I mean, it just, you know, when you go into the office, you see a lot of... Um, photos and all these uh, cover images right there it's like man you, you're like living in a dream right there so this is a perfect fantasy right there yeah plus uh, Walter Mitty has a crush on um, his co-worker who he wanted to talk to uh, and add on on his uh, eHarmony uh, page yeah, that's why he was talking to his friend and of course um, he works uh, for a uh, a very professional uh, photographer who is nowhere to be seen, but he actually sent him all the negatives. The only problem is it was missing negative 25. So that's why he went on this journey to find them. So that way they'd be able to print their last issue of Life magazine. Yeah. Anyway. But it just looks so beautiful. And... I'm just glad I bought this for a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Considering that this is from Fox and uh, Samuel Goldwyn Films, you know, by uh, which is owned by the founder Samuel Goldwyn Jr., who's no longer with us. Yeah. So he produced the film. Yeah. Mostly because he was actually working on the remake uh, that dates back all the way back in in the 90s. Because originally they were going to get Jim Carrey to play the role instead of Ben Stiller. They were also going to bring in Mike Myers, too. but And, and even Owen Wilson, too. They, they were actually going to bring all these actors to, to play the role until Ben Stiller decided to take over. They were going to get another director like uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, Chuck Russell, and even the, even the Gore Babinski. But they all turned it down because they had to work on other projects. Uh, even Ron Howard was going to direct this too. But that didn't happen. And since all the studios had had changed places, they decided to give it to Fox. And and Ben Stiller was very interested in it. So there you go. So this is the movie. So let's get to the review. It stars Ben Stiller with Christian Wig from the movie... Bridesmaids, as well as um, Whip It and all these other films that she's been in. Shirley MacLaine, a great actress, been in several films throughout her entire career, yeah, including movies like Steel Magnolias uh, and uh, The Terms of Endearment come to mind. Adam Scott, who later went on to do films like Hut to Time Machine 2, which didn't care for it at all. That was one of the worst sequels I've ever seen. 
coming from the original that I really love. Catherine Hahn from the movie We're the Millers, and I know she went on to do the film The Visit, which I hated that one. Didn't really care for it either. Yeah, there was a M. Night Shyamalan the found footage uh, suspense thriller. Pat Oswalt from The King of Queens. Adrian Martinez from the movie Taxi, which I didn't care for either. That was one of my worst movies ever. I know I, I keep going, drawing the line here, but I had to say it because that's where he's from. He's been in other films too. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, Patton Oswalt was also in Taxi. <laughs> yeah. Alfred Derry uh, Olofsson, uh, John Daly, Terrence, Bernie, Hines, Marcus, and Turi, Kyle Lennox, and Sean Penn. Yeah, with Sean Penn, has been in a lot of films uh, throughout the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and today. Like movies like At Close Range, Fast Times of Richmond High, The Falcon and the Snowman, Casualties of War, and, uh, even movies like Milk, 21 Grams, Mystic River, uh, Dead Man Walking, yeah, those movies. It's written by Stephen Conrad, which, once again, based on the short story by James Ferber, and it's directed by Ben Stiller. The movie begins when we meet a man named Walter Mitty, who's played by Ben Stiller, who works at Life Magazine as a negative assets manager, along with his understudy and co-worker, Hernando, who's played by Adrian Martinez. He develops a crush on a co-worker named Cheryl, who's played by Christian Wig, a very beautiful co-worker. Enough for him to actually wanted to add him on his eHarmony page. The problem is, though, was that it has an error. So they decided to contact um, the customer service representative named Todd Matter, who's played by Pat Oswalt, to see if they could fix this error. So meanwhile, you know, he's trying to go back to his work, trying to keep up with something that's going on, and then he begins to, to find out that his... Um, professional photojournalist who he works with named Sean O'Connor who's played by Sean Penn had gave him a gift which was a wallet along with what seems to be a negative that's that's hidden somewhere in the wallet with which, which he didn't know that was in there but he did send all the negatives that were there only the problem is that's when he found out that number 25 negative frame is missing because Life Magazine was planning to release their final issue of the printing source because now Life Magazine was going to be switched to their online source. Yeah, which, believe it or not, that's exactly how it happened back in the 2000s when they decided to switch from regular magazines to online. So that was the only way you can access but the website's already been defunct, and that's how it happened. But they've been actually uh, printing out some other magazines uh, as special issues uh, from time. So, and they did that uh, during the 2000s and 2010s, as we know it. So, yeah, they've been doing that. But not as old. Well, anyway, he also has a boss who works at Life Magazine named Ted Hendricks, who's a complete jerk, who's played by Adam Scott, and he wanted uh, Mitty to actually find all the negatives enough to actually print them and put it on the final issue of Life Magazine. So that's when he began to find free photo frames that, that he printed out, only to discover some clues. Yeah, one actually has a thumb with a silver ring on it. The other has a picture of a wooden board of some sort, which I, it turned out to be a piano. Well, that, I mean, that's what he, he figured out. 
And the other one actually has a picture of a boat. So he begins to, to go for his journey to, to Greenland, where Sean O'Connor might be at, to see where he can find him and try to see if he can find the missing number 25 frame that he was trying to look for. Um, he also has a sister named Odisessa, who's played by Catherine Hahn, a very quirky uh, type of sister, who um, it brings in the um, Clementine cake that he had to bring in to work, that um, his mother Edna, who's played by Shirley MacLaine, had made, because she's also uh, staying in with his sister to a new apartment since he just moved out from her retirement home and not to mention uh, <laughs> he also have all the old gifts that he got when when they were kids like the stretch Armstrong Dow <laughs> as we know it so because he was still searching for um, the missing number 25 frame everywhere he goes in, or, in order to give it to Ted and so they can downsize it and put it onto the magazine and he had trouble finding it he decided the best way to to deal with this was to take a trip to Greenland to find Sean O'Connor to to see where he's at once he arrived at Greenland you know, he just took a uh, rented car from Hertz he took the red one just to drive all the way down to a local bar where he found a pilot who was very drunk and he was saying karaoke he basically drinks uh, beer out of a glass uh, boot and then they begin to yeah they even had a fight too and they explained that uh, where Sean is and that's when he actually daydreams that uh, Cheryl was there singing the song uh, Space Oddity by David Bowie. Yeah, you can even hear David Bowie's uh, singing in the background just as she was singing it with a guitar, yeah, playing it. Um, just when he was about to ready to jump all the way up to the helicopter just to make it there. Because as we know at, at the earlier in the film, you know, Ted started teasing him yeah, throwing him a paper clip on him just right when he was uh, zoning out, uh, daydreaming that he was a mountain climber and trying to uh, get to know uh, Cheryl. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which was a very um, interesting moment right there. So once he was uh, up with the pilot, he wants up jumping into the ocean just between two boats yeah he missed uh, one of them he was gonna go for the giant one but he wants to act, but then he the pilot mentioned that he was supposed to be on the smaller ones but then he began to find out that uh, yeah, with his silver briefcase there was a shark and it appeared in the ocean but suddenly he got caught so they they picked him up board into uh, the ship and they're trying to find out uh, um, who he is and and where if everyone knows who Sean is and, and some sort so then um, the next day and just to keep in mind he had decided to take the bike and decided to ride all the way and you know, just trying to find him, but then you know that that stopped, and then he had to walk all the way to another mile, all the way until he meets these uh, free kids. Yeah, he actually traded his Stretch Armstrong Dell for a skateboard, so then he can continue his uh, journey by going, by actually riding on the skateboard. Yeah, also earlier in the film though he. We begin to find out that Cheryl actually has a son, and he's a skateboarder, so he actually practiced. Uh, he was uh, helping the, the kid out by practicing how to do those kip flips on the skateboard. That was really cool. 
But anyway, he, he went down with the skateboard until into um, a hotel, only to find out that the, the hotel manager was about to, to leave because we began to find out that there was a volcano eruption that arrived. And that's when he spotted uh, Sean on top of a plane. So they had to drive all the way straight to, you're going to love this, a local Papa John's because we also found out that his father also works at Papa John's. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of product placement in this movie as we know it. So he just calls Cheryl to see what's going on while he was trying to solve in all these clues that he was trying to find. And he was just spending time in Greenland knowing how beautiful the landscapes look. Yeah, but after that, he came back from Greenland since he couldn't find Sean, only to discover that he was fired from his job. Yeah, and that sucks. So now he was laid off. He threw away the wallet that Sean gave him um, when he went to um, his mother's apartment. But then he saw one clue where he found out uh, what it really turned out to be. That he decided to go back by using the traveling book and all the, um, the equipment that he needs. And decided to give him some... Uh, Clementine cake that Edna makes to uh, all the uh, Afghanistanians out there. <laughs> yeah, since he was at Afghanistan, and then he was trying to find where Sean is until what luck <laughs> he found him. And he was just about to be ready taking a picture of a bobcat. Yeah, a bobcat. And that's when uh, he was trying to explain to Sean uh, where the the missing negative is, and and yeah, he began to find out that it was inside the wallet the whole time. So that's what leads to that, and that's when he finally found it. And since he already threw away the the wallet, and now that uh, Edna had found it, uh, things turned out for the best because now. He came back to to Life magazine and, and decided to give Ted uh, the negative. So things will be will be better for him to finally print out the the final issue because already they're being switched to uh, online now. So after all this, um, and things were turning out for the better for for Walter Mitty and. Of course, he was with Cheryl to find out um, what happens in the end, and there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, anyway, um, I thought it was a great remake. Uh, very well done. I mean, I, I could definitely see what Ben Stiller had to go for by uh, using some interesting uh, cinematography that they got. The cinematographer, of course, was done by uh, Stuart uh, Dreisberg where they actually show all the beautiful landscapes of Greenland, uh, Afghanistan, all these other lo locations that he's been into. Uh, plus we get to see all the daydreams that he has done. Like, I, I, I like what, one of my favorite moments in the film where he actually um, <laughs> he tried to save Cheryl from a, an exploding building actually try to save uh, the free-legged dog and and everybody out out of there where he actually jumps hop into the building and and he try to get everybody out of there safely and there you go <laughs> saving uh, Cheryl's life and there's also another scene where he daydreams that he actually had a fight with Ted just as Ted was about to grab uh, his uh, Stretch Armstrong doll that he has with him along with his silver briefcase along with the negatives and and it was inside the elevator and they just had a huge fight uh, there was a interesting stunt right there where they they actually started fighting and then they they crash uh, 
from the elevator to the third floor of the building and they went all the way down and that's when they continue uh, <laughs> their biggest battle throughout the streets of New York while holding on to the stretch Armstrong Dow <laughs> and if you watch the Blu-ray they actually had a previs on that particular scene which is even longer than than the scene that's in the movie which I thought it looks very impressive the way they did it and that, that was the best moment right there when you see uh, Walter and Ted battling each other while holding on to the Stretch Armstrong the stretches and <laughs> Knocks through all these buildings and and uh, and cars uh, on the side, while Walter was um, <laughs> skateboarding onto the sidewalk, concrete, and and Ted was actually uh, skiing on the <laughs> on the sidewalk concrete too, and in that impressive scene, so it, it was amazing. Uh, on top of that, um, it definitely had a wonderful uh, score that was uh, done by uh, three people, actually. Um, yeah, it was done by Fyodor Shapiro, Jose Gonzalez, uh, he actually had a song, too, and uh, Rogue Bally. They, they all did a great job. It definitely captures the spirit of the story has a wonderful soundtrack which is on my blu-ray combo pack uh, has uh, good songs they even have a song called uh, escape uh, the pina colada Sun in the mix uh, even has a song called dirty paws by up monsters and men yeah there's like uh, there's a, yeah there was a song called stay alive with jose gonzalez and um, as well as far away yeah. A lot of great songs right there. It just hits the movie uh, perfectly. Um, very impressive CGI uh, imagery, and I also love the shots where they actually use all the frames and negatives, all taken from Kodak. How they really show all the imagery that they use for the movie. I thought it worked so well when they did that. It really captures. Uh, a Kodak moment right there <laughs> which by the way I I had taken some photography uh, back when I was in college and like in 2005 I was it was black and white photography of course yeah and I remember there was like I had to take a lot of great pictures um, trying to see if I can capture the spirit it wasn't easy but at least I did whatever I can but I did actually manage to take a lot of those interesting pictures that almost seemed like clues to me, like sort of like what they showed in the movie. I thought it looks really impressive because you could pretty much tell that it's black and white photography right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, uh, as for the cast, uh, I thought Ben Stiller did a great job portraying the role as Walter Mitty, the way uh, he experienced it. Uh, it was nice to see him actually uh, play a, an actual nice guy instead of all these other characters that he often plays. But he plays it differently, though. I mean, he was like a nice guy. They wanted to get him to know him better. And, and the fact that um, he daydreams a lot. I mean, he always daydreams whenever um, whenever he uh, he's with Cheryl or... <laughs> Or anybody else, or whatever, it just happens. <laughs> yeah, and Ben Stiller did a great job directing the movie too. He he really uh, knows exactly what he was doing when he's trying to create that style. He also has his stunt doubles too to join in. In fact, he even has his uh, long-running stuntman, uh, Greg Fitzpatrick, and who I believe he also was the stunt double for Heavyweights when he played Tony Perkis uh, with that scene where he had to uh, head on to the branch and <laughs> and that's where we get to see uh, him uh, as uh, Tony Perkis uh, hanging around and talking to uh, one of them. Yeah, I figured that was him. I mean, he did look familiar to me. But he also used uh, 
another stunt double to do the the skateboarding scenes which yeah he had trouble doing that and that was really hard but at the end he just got it right by actually using all that strings and all that and by the way uh, he does have great chemistry with Christian Wig in the movie I thought they worked together on screen the way I saw it it just feels like man th this is like a great moment especially that scene where <laughs> He dreamed that uh, he was Benjamin Button, <laughs> and um, he was with uh, Cheryl. <laughs> well, he was just like completely old, and he's very tiny. Well, she is just a lot taller and bigger than her. <laughs> it was just funny. Uh, uh, Adam Scott, of course, is just. Uh, as we speak, portrays him as a jerk in this movie. It's like, man, you just want to hate this guy so much. And it, and it's true, yeah, because he's always going around teasing uh, Walter all this time, and man, you just want to, you just want to smack this guy. Yeah, yeah, he, he was being a dick. Um, also, uh, all the other characters, uh, even the ones that had the smaller roles like uh, Sean Penn for instance I thought Sean Penn uh, played him perfectly as uh, a professional uh, laid-back uh, photojournalist and you know, he's very good at what he's doing and even though we didn't get to see him as much other than the pictures and and even in, at the um, almost towards the end of the movie um, he seemed like the, the kind of guy um, you can deal with, but hey, you know, he had to he had to be there just trying to help him out and had to take all these wonderful pictures that he did when he was all the way to Greenland and all these other places. So, and it had to happen. <laughs> and Pat Oswalt did a great job too. Uh, as the um, eHarmony customer service representative, yeah, he also gave him some Cinnabons, <laughs> the cinema rolls and all that. Trying to explain about uh, how he finally uh, worked on the his eHarmony page and how everything turns out so in the end. That he finally gets to um, experience his uh, journey and be able to uh, write all this stuff down enough for him to add uh, Cheryl on his page. So, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, once again, the it just looks amazing. The way they shot this film just really captures the spirit of the classic story and as far as I'm concerned, I think um, well, even though he's not alive, but James Ferber would have really love to see what this version had to go for because he didn't like the 1947 adaptation so he would have loved this one actually if that's certainly the case I definitely recommend uh, the remake of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty because it's definitely worth a watch and I definitely think it's very underrated too that that sadly didn't get much attention even though it could have had much attention after that that long extended trailer that they got which looks very beautiful with the music that they put in and all the marketing that went into it just really helps it so much but yeah it'll definitely be a cult classic as far as I, as I know so anyway that's the movie and I give it Four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.